Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mindspaces channel. In case you're new, then welcome. I hope that you will like it here. It is so nice to see all of you tuning in today. As you can see, I have my computer ready. We are going to be answering some questions. Yes, yes, it is Q&A time. I am finally answering the questions that you have asked in the community discord. If you haven't joined yet, the link is in the description down below. And without further ado, we are going to get started with the first question right away. How to stand up for yourself to avoid being used by others? This question is really interesting because there is the standing up for yourself part which requires you to know who you are and what your values are, what your worth is and let me tell you, please give yourself your own worth, know your worth. You are the one who knows and who tells your worth. Don't let anyone else define your worth, okay? Don't let them do that to you. You are worth it. You're worthy of being successful, you're worthy of being loved, you're worthy of being respected. So you are also worthy of standing up for yourself and standing up for your values and standing up for your worth. This is the first part. The second part is avoiding being used by others. To do that, ask yourself how the person that you are hanging out with, that you have the feeling is using you, fits into your vision of the future. Does this person fit into your vision of the future? What is your vision of the future? Do you see this person as being part of it in some way? Because sometimes it is okay, you know, to help someone, to bear with someone. There are certain situations where we can say, okay, you know, but there are no excuses for someone treating you badly. You do never deserve to be treated badly, ever. Next question. Steps to get out of a negative spiral or a series of negative events. All right, the first thing to do here is to do a situation check. So, how is the situation that you are currently in? Just take a moment and analyze it and try to leave all the feelings aside for now. Just sit down maybe with a piece of paper and write down what is going on. What is this spiral that you are in? What is it exactly? Is it piling up assignments? Is it exams? Is it stress? Is it some extracurricular activities that are taking up too much time? you name it. Sit down, write down what situation are you currently in. Second step is to identify what can I do about it and what is out of my control. So what are the steps that you can take to actively take back the control over the situation and what are the things that you don't have control over? For example, luck, weather, <laughs> all these kind of things you can control. So identify zone of control, zone of no control. Once you have done that, go step by step on the things that you can control. It doesn't make any sense to focus on the things that you don't have under control. See the things that you have under control and put one foot in front of the other, really. Third question. How to stay motivated during stressful times? We have talked a little bit in our live stream about this one, but here is the short answer. Identify first whether you are so unmotivated during stressful times because you are overwhelmed. Signs of overwhelm or overwork can be fatigue, irritability, lack of focus, um, if you are changing your eating habits, so eating more or less than usual, if you have problems sleeping and all these kind of things, if you're getting sick more often than you regularly would. That could be signs of 
overwork. Sometimes when we are stressed out, when we are lacking motivation, we just need a break. We just need to slow down, to let go and to take a good day of rest. If this is not the case, then here are a few things that you can do to spark your motivation. Take a piece of paper right now. Pause the video, go and get a piece of paper and a pen and come back. All right, now that you have your piece of paper and your pen, you're gonna write down why you wanna do the things that you're doing at the moment or that you should be doing. Why do you wanna do it? Why is it important to you? Once you have done that, you're going to write down what will your life be like if you do what you are supposed to do? How will it feel like? What will change? What will be different if you are doing right now the things that you are wanting to do? And then you are going to write down how is your life going to be like once you have reached your end goal? How is this gonna change? How is your life like? Where do you live? What does your job look like? What does your everyday look like? Now, once you've done that, sit down at your desk, write a list of tasks for your next Pomodoro session. That can be 30 minutes, 25 minutes or 45 minutes. Choose a duration that seems manageable, you know, for a start. Write your task list, start a timer and do this session. And during this session, focus only on the tasks that you have told yourself you're gonna do in that period of time. Once you have finished, start with the next session. Once you have finished, start with the next session. And this helps a lot, especially when you're losing motivation, when you feel like everything is just too much. Breaking down the big assignments into smaller ones that seem more achievable and more reachable is going to help you to zoom out a little bit remove a little bit the pressure and the stress of the big assignment and it's also going to help you to motivate you and to get you going. Next question. How to let go of grudges over someone and behave as if nothing happened? I made a video about how to let go of grudges because this is in my opinion a really really important topic. It was a really important topic for me so if this is something that interests you I'm gonna Link it somewhere here on the screen. I think it's going to be there, but I'm not sure. Anyhow, what I'm gonna say to that in one quick sentence is, letting go of grudges begins with forgiveness and forgiveness doesn't mean that you are not learning a lesson from this entire experience because we learn lessons from every single experience that we make and it is really important that we learn the lesson from this experiences that we have made. So I don't think the solution is to continue as if nothing has happened. I believe that it is way better to work through it and continue with the wisdom that you have collected through this experience. This wisdom can be full forgiveness and a stronger bond with the person that you have forgiven and that you have worked through this conflict or it can also result in you learning a lesson and wanting to take distance from that person and continue in separate directions for example. There are many options on how you can learn the lesson that an experience is teaching you and also how you want to implement this lesson into your life, although I think that continuing as if nothing happened is in that sense not possible as you will be taking this new knowledge and this new experience and this new lesson with you in the future, but this doesn't mean that you cannot forgive and it also doesn't mean that you have to say goodbye to this person forever. I believe that working through conflicts can even strengthen a bond between friends or between partners or between family members. If you really work through it together and learn from it, both of you, then you might even be able to continue stronger together. How can one avoid developing a parasocial relationship with a creator? So you know, every kind of relationship has some unwritten rules. 
For example, friendship means that you are spending quality time with each other, that you are there for each other, that you help each other out, that you have each other's back and so on and so forth. A love relationship also comes with own rules, like for example, trust and love and exclusivity or you know, they are different a little bit for every single person and that's why it's really, really important to talk about this with your partner, with your friend or with whomever you're having any kind of relationship, really. So, but in general, we have different kind of relationships and they more or less have some sort of idea attached to it. With parasocial relationships, I feel like the idea of this relationship is not as clear as the idea of, for example, friendship is, or the idea of a family relationship is. I think that if we talk about it a little more often, if we clarify the relationship that creators have with viewers and that viewers have with creators and what this relationship means, that this helps a lot. I also have the feeling that parasocial relationships seem quite new, although they have existed already for a really long time. Now with social media, especially with streaming, because we have this illusion of really having a conversation, this really increases the, the possibilities of forming parasocial relationships. I definitely believe that the viewer has some sort of relationship with the creator and also that the creator has some sort of relationship with the viewer but the relationship is of very changing nature given of the size of the viewership and the size of the community given of how much the creator really interacts with the viewer how much the involvement of the creator with the viewer is so again i think that parasocial relationships is a topic that is very important to be talked about. If you would like to see a video about parasocial relationships, let me know in the comments. Next question. How can you move forward when reading personal development books doesn't help anymore? Whatever you're going through, you do not need to go through it alone. And so, as well, you don't need to go alone through your personal development journey. It can be very fun as well to work with a coach. It can be very helpful and can be very supportive. So working with someone who can guide you through your personal development journey is, for example, a way to move one step forward. For example, with a coach, with a mentor or with programs, online courses, group coachings, all these kind of things, they can help you to expand and to kickstart your growth journey. What also can help and what I would definitely recommend going for is finding a soul tribe. It's finding like-minded people who are also on this journey that you can exchange with. There are many communities on YouTube, for example, like the Mindspace community that you can join for free and where you will find people who are inspiring each other, who are motivating each other and who are pulling each other up and giving each other new food for thoughts, really. How to build confidence, because I found it so hard for me. Building confidence also comes down to knowing your worth and knowing your value. Know your value, know what you're worth. Also know what makes you you, what makes you unique. What are you good at? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your areas of growth? What are your superpowers? All of this can help you to build up your self-confidence. The second step of building your self-confidence is to train it. Train your flexibility. I have made a video about flexibility. I'm gonna link it somewhere here on the screen and also in the description so you can go and watch it right after this video. Anyhow, training your flexibility, training your confidence by putting yourself out there, putting yourself at risk, training yourself to overcome the unexpected and to master these situations is really the way to go about it. If you were to create your own holiday, what would you call it and what is it about? Whew, this is a difficult question. 
I have thought about it when I read it and I thought that I would like to create a day of freedom and a day of self and authenticity. I don't know exactly what the name of this holiday should be, but the idea would be that it is a day to celebrate your human experience. It is a day to celebrate self, to celebrate authenticity and to celebrate how being you and being only yourself is enough. That will be my holiday. Given the chance to chat with anyone, dead or alive, who will it be and why? I would love to have a chat with Marsha M. Linneham because she has created the Dialectical Behavioral Therapy and I am so mesmerized by her entire story that I really, really would love to uh, speak with her. Maybe it is because I am just at the moment reading her book um, called Building a Life Worth Living. I'm gonna put it in the description as well if you wanna check it out. And the last question, Tyler Swift song, you would jam on. So I don't really listen to Tyler Swift, but I have checked her out yesterday and I have listened a little bit to her songs. And there's one song that I really like. I wrote it down. Let me find it. Here. It is called Gold Rush. This is my favorite song of Tyler Swift so far. All right, guys, we are done with the Q&A. Thank you so much for all your questions. If you would like to support the channel, then don't forget to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, or even share this video with someone who would also like to watch it. And see you in the next one.